I am here with actress Abigail Hawk. Thank you so much for taking time to sit down with me. Abigail stars on Blue Bloods. It's very funny to her, but she does. It's very funny <laughs> she to is one of the stars. It's yes, hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> You've been on Blue Bloods actually for nine years already. Yes. Crazy, right? Yes, it is crazy and amazing and awesome. Before we, yeah, before we jump into there, let's talk a little bit about when you first decided you wanted to be an actress and, and what you did to, if you've decided yet that you want to be one, I guess. Yeah, well, I'm still growing up, so yeah. that's, that's all still, you know, up for debate. But um, my poor parents, I, I think very early on, like the second that I had words, I started mimicking commercials. Mm -hmm. um, Teddy Ruxpin commercial, uh, Little Mermaid, I knew all the lyrics within, you know, the first time watching it. Like, I'd sing Under the Sea in a Jamaican accent, which is probably yeah, oh. not wise. No. Um, <laughs> and my, my mom uh, saw in the newspaper that there was a... a local church slash playhouse doing um, a production of The Sound of Music. I was six at the time and she was like, you know, let's just, let's go see. And honestly, that was it. I auditioned, I got the role of Gretel and... Here we are. And here we are. We yes. won't say how many years later, that's really No, we won't. It's dumb. like two years later. Two years later, yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> Blue Bloods goes back in time a lot. <laughs> it does. Makeup <laughs> is excellent. <laughs> Very good at aging me. <laughs> <Did you? laughs> when you... Uh, actually decided once you were not of unlegal age. That's yes. a really terrible way to phrase that. It's okay. But <laughs> you, you follow, yeah, you're following me, which is probably worse. <laughs> <laughs> did you go to college for acting and I performing? I did. I did. Um, I went to college at the University of Maryland, College okay. Park, um, majored in theater performance, mm -hmm. and I was part of their uh, guinea pig class. They had just built this state-of-the-art, gorgeous, um, performing art space that mingled dance and music and theater. They'd all been mm -hmm. separate until that point. And so we were the first class to come in there and get to play with these gorgeous new spaces and experimental lab uh, productions. And it was, I loved my years at Maryland. It was wonderful. And then uh, I graduated and came up here and here I am. Was that daunting to uh, come up to New York? Oh yeah. yeah. Um, I traveled uh, to Europe when uh, I graduated college just to go away because I knew it would probably be the last time I could travel for a long time. So mm -hmm. I went and, you know, did that over there. I guess Europe's over here if you're from my perspective. <laughs> anyway, um, and I moved and it was it was very scary. I mean, I'd never lived uh, in a big city, even though I'm from Atlanta, I'd never lived on my own mm -hmm. in a big city. I knew nothing about apartment life. Um, I was relatively sheltered. Um, and New York was scary, but you know, every day that uh, I worked my retail job, I got a little bit more confident and learned my way around the neighborhoods, mm -hmm. memorized the subway map, and uh, just auditioned and hustled, and you know, here I am. When you came up, did you primarily want to do theater since you were coming to I New did. York? I did. Yeah. yeah, it's you know, it's interesting. Is I I grew up wanting to be a marine biologist, but I think I always knew I was going to go into the arts mm -hmm. in some capacity, whether it was musical theater theater, film, TV, um, it just seemed like no matter what I did, my, my life kept leading me that way. I mean, even at 12, when I was in sixth grade and fully on the science track, um, I got a television series, <clears throat> The Ill-Fated Reality Check. Literally was just going to bring that yeah, up. Thank um, you for walking me right into it. <laughs> <laughs> Ill-Fated, but you know. Well, I mean, you know, it, it got 13 episodes, so And I guess the, the lead these days. has gone on to do one or two things. I know, Ryan Seacrest. Yeah. My, he probably doesn't even remember me, but man, I was 12, and he was 19, and he had the most perfect Zach Morris, Saved by the Bell hair, totally idolized him, I, and he was also from Atlanta, like yeah. I was, so, you know. I did, I saw a picture on IMDb, and I was like, wow, he does look like Mark Paul. Oh, yeah. A lot. Oh, yeah, and he, I mean, he was dreamy, and he was so cute. He was like this kid that got trapped in a computer um, this was back when, you know, computers were like the size of the room that we're <laughs> they in. They could literally, yeah, yeah they could yeah, literally you could have be trapped a vacation in, in a computer. Um, <laughs> and I, you know, was the kid that bought the house. I didn't buy the house, but my parents bought the house. Mm -hmm. And, you know, me and my kid brother would go up and have all these adventures with Jack Kraft and his computer and, you know, learn stuff. It was fun. And then you went and you did various episodic work here in New York. I did, yeah. Yeah, like you do, you, you know. Did, that's right. You Trying did the, to get that union card, baby. You did, and you did Law & Order, which is the New York <laughs> actor's calling card. Yes, yes. And that actually, that, my, first, uh, my first SVU episode got me my SAG card. Mm -hmm. So. And then you did a second one, right? And then I did a second a, one 10 years character. later, so yeah. I came full circle. It was, uh, it was a pretty thrilling experience for me. That's really cool. I actually had a name this time. I was paramedic number two the first time. Right. This time I had even a last name. I was like wow. a full person. You're almost, yeah, that's right. I mean, I was, I was wholly human. It was beautiful. <laughs> We 
weird last name, but you know, after 20 seasons, I'm sure they've run out of names. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably all recycled at this point oh anyway. Oh my gosh, I can't even imagine. We have a hard time on Blue Bloods with names. Yeah. Oh. Speaking of Blue Bloods, you've been an original. You've been on since the beginning. Yes. Which is pretty exciting. Yes. Your role has increased throughout the years, which is also exciting. What's, what's it like being part of a show that kind of is twofold? It's very family-based in terms of their Sunday dinners at home, mm -hmm. but then you're the other side of the family at work. You yes. and Robert and Greg. I'm the Blue family. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's thrilling. I mean, you know, I feel like Baker and I have matured together. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we have grown into confident women together, and it's been really exciting. I mean, I became a mom two times over mm -hmm. on the show, um, and it's really made me who I am today. It's been uh, incredible for me to work alongside Tom and mm -hmm. Greg Jabara and Robert Clohessy. Mm -hmm. I don't get to see all the other guys as much, but when I do, it's so much fun. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's, it's amazing. This is almost a decade of my life. I yeah. mean, that's a long time, especially for a network show to be on and successful. So, you know, it's, I love the family dynamic. I, you know, I don't wistfully wish I was at the dinner table because I, I love that that's that. A separate thing, and yeah. This is, yeah, because yeah. Frank is who he is at mm -hmm. home and then he's who he is at work. And right. it's beautiful because I think I know him, I think Baker understands him on both a professional and a personal level. Um, so I see both parts of him anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and who wants to be with the other people anyway because they're filming in the freezing New York cold weather. Like That's true. Yeah, Donnie, poor Donnie and Marissa. Yeah. Oh man, they're just always outside, <laughs> always. Yeah, Will and Vanessa don't have such a great time either. No, probably. yeah, that's true. They're also they're, out. Well, they're in the squad car a lot, thank God. But yeah, they're outside. Yeah, they're outside a lot. So and it's I'm good just, that I'm in my works cushy office. Inside, you know? yeah. yeah, it's nice and warm up there. <laughs> Actually, you'd be surprised. It's like a, a meat locker on that set, but it's still it's not outside. But so I'm not going to yeah, complain. So but like today on set, it was 50 degrees. Uh, I mean, that's cold. That is you cold. You know, it's not cold if you're outside, but yeah. when you're inside and you're wearing you know pantyhose and a tiny little shift dress, it's yeah. That's a it's a little cold. I'm sure you're not going to get any sympathy from your co-stars who film outdoors, though. I'm not going to get any sympathy. <laughs> but they're all in a three-piece suit, so really, you Very know. true. And they always have coats on anyway, so like, stop crying. It's fine. <laughs> I'm not bitter. Now, all. this season, we saw that your character actually had a husband that materialized on screen. Yeah. What was that like to have that happen? It was... It was so interesting because, you know, it had been so long. Obviously, like, Baker's been married since the beginning, mm -hmm. um, and obviously she's been pregnant on the show, so they have children, but he had never been spoken about except kind of in passing. Um, you knew his name was Brian, which incidentally is my actual husband's name, so that was and a little... And so, I mean, yeah, it's kind yeah, of it's just a little weird. Weird, so weird. <laughs> you can um, only hang out with people named Brian. Yeah. I'm sorry to all the Marios and <laughs> Pauls and... Um, <laughs> Sam. Tom, anyway. Dick, and Harry. <laughs> yeah, Tom, Dick, Harry. I do hang out with Toms a lot. Um, where was I going with this? Derailed. The husband. Before. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, you know, I'd, ma I'd already made a lot of decisions about who he was and what he did for a living. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, we find out in the like first episode that he's a cop. So I kind of had to go, oh, okay, well, I'm just going to retrain my brain that, you know, this is not who he was and mm -hmm. now he's a cop great I'm married to a cop and then you know we find out that he has a near-death experience and then I actually get to see what he looks like and it's just been it's been such a cool discovery I'm so glad they chose someone tall mm -hmm. and handsome um <laughs> you know thankfully they didn't give me an ugly guy right because then you would have just tripped over the plug <laughs> then and I like, would have been like whoop yep yeah, sorry oh, sorry Brian <laughs> don't don't come Ugh. in don't come in he's fine he'll, <laughs> he'll stop coding eventually <laughs> <laughs> but that was, you know, I think also uh, when I saw that episode, even after reading the script, I don't think I was prepared for how intense that first scene was when mm -hmm. he gets shot in the cop car. That ambush scene was insane. I mean, it just was up close and personal. And yeah. see, ugh, it just was too close. It was too close to home. The whole Brian thing. And, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, absolutely. So I went home and hugged my own husband very tight that night. <laughs> How do you guys uh, keep from breaking up on set, or do you just not even try? Uh, you know, it depends on where we are in the episode. Most of the time, we are consummate professionals. Mm -hmm. But there are many times that, you know, we're not. Um, we try to save face and, you know, be professional when the cameras are rolling. But, I mean, today, I don't know, all of us drank crazy juice before <laughs> we started filming. I think it was because it was cold outside. I don't know, but we were all Gearing up loopy. Up as all get out today, it was amazing. I mean, Tom was in rare form. He just was 
joke after joke after joke after joke, and we would barely finish the scene, mm -hmm. and he just would go ahead and break character. And I'm like, dude, stop it. This is our <laughs> close-ups. That's not fair. Do they, I was just, that was what I was going to ask you. Do they literally try to break you up as you have to give one of your Baker looks as you're leaving? I mean, most or? of the time, because we've, you know, we've developed a shorthand over the nine years together, mm -hmm. most of the time we all break up together. Uh -huh. So, you know, it's not that we're trying to, it's not like an SNL thing where we're trying right. to save face. We don't purposely sabotage each other. It's just, we're all idiots. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> We all have the mentality of 12-year-olds, and you know. Now, Blue Bloods is obviously one of the best shows on television, but other than Blue Bloods, you have two films coming out this year, correct? I, I actually think Keeper they are, yes. The, uh, I think the they Only Woman in the World, year. right? Yes. Um, so The Only I'm Woman in the World. I'm glad I could let you know. That you yeah, thank you. <laughs> well, it's, you know, and I actually think there's another one. I think Bubble Girl comes out this year, too. They, a lot of them, you know, they're labors of love, and they're independent films, mm -hmm. so sometimes you never know if they're even going to make it to the yeah. point where they get distributed, get made, go mm -hmm. to the film festival circuit. You don't know. Um, right. But they were all lovely, and you know, each and every one of them features some strong females, which I am very appreciative of in this day and age. And uh, you know, I think we're I think we're getting somewhere, which good. is good. Yeah. yeah, it's about time. I know, I agree. Now, one film that did come out though is was your uh, Christmas movie of two <laughs> yeah. years ago. You have joined the illustrious ranks of actresses oh, man, in Christmas films. I would do those films. for the rest of my life after Blue Bloods gets you know thirteen more seasons. I was just going to say, please don't you know, don't yes. jinx Blue Bloods yes. at all. But I those are the best. Yeah, the best. I had an awesome time doing that. It was great, and it was up in Buffalo, which is supposed to be freezing basically mm -hmm. year round. We filmed that in March, it's supposed to be in Vermont, but we filmed up in Buffalo and mm -hmm. there was no snow. It was like the one time <laughs> ever course. in life that there was no snow. So the art department was phenomenal and really you know, made it look as festive as they could, <laughs> <laughs> even though it felt like June out there. You're we were all sweating. in bikinis. Yeah, yeah, seriously. Um. <laughs> Trying to make our breath appear. <laughs> it's so cold. Does being on Blue Bloods and, and having, not being a series regular, does that give you the flexibility and the opportunity to be around your kids more and, and oh, to yeah. really get. Listen, it's the, it's the best job in the world because, it, you know, my kids are New Yorkers mm -hmm. and uh, I'm a Long Islander and it's great to be able to finish a day of work and go home, pick them up from school. I mean, I'm a very hands-on mom. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my husband is um, very hands-on as well. We really just want to be there for them and raise them ourselves, which has been hard, but also right the most fulfilling thing I've ever done. Um, and uh, I think, you know, we I really work on Tom's schedule, which is great because he kind of bookends his episodes together. So he'll film like the last four days of one episode and then the first four days oh, of okay. the next. And then he goes back out to LA to be with his family. So that whole time I am, can either work on another project or, you know, yeah. I'm home with my kids. That's so, awesome. So yeah. not only is Tom great to work with, he also is helping your He's, oh, life. It's, I'm, I mean, I'm telling you, it's yeah. the best. Yeah. It's the best gig in the world. It is the best of all worlds, mm -hmm. and I'm the luckiest girl. Since you started out with a love of theater, is it something you would like to tackle here in New York? Yes, and actually, um, back in September, I did the first play that I've done in nine years. Um, it was written by Dorothy Lyman, who was oh. in Mama's Family. Yeah. and yeah, Opal um, and all my children. Yep. Um, <laughs> and she has got, boy, she's got some amazing ideas. She's all of a sudden churning out plays like mm -hmm. butter. Um, so that was thrilling to work with an Emmy winner and she starred alongside me. She was my mom and it was, it was terrifying because awesome. I was doing it concordantly while I was working Blue Blood. So there were a lot of late nights and yeah. crying because I'd never had to learn that many lines, you know, in a decade. Right. Um, not all at once anyway, but, but I did it and, uh, and I'm really proud of myself that I did it. And that immediate reaction obviously has got to be you know, really probably helps as a performer oh. or it hopefully not hurts, but if like people are not into it and you're trying to look out and you're just like, you almost have to phase it out if they're not well, there's, into the performance. There's nothing, there is nothing like theater. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, as much as I love film and television and I'm grateful for the work, there's just nothing like that exchange between actor and audience mm -hmm. um, and feeding off of their energy and them feeding off of yours. It's so incredibly human and that's right. why I got into this business in the first place is just because I, I love that sharing mm -hmm. um, and telling stories and, and moving people. And yeah. if that means I move them to laugh, awesome. If it means I move them to tears, awesome. I just think we need to get back to that connection. Absolutely. I feel like we're missing that, you know. I mean, I'm just as guilty as being on my smartphone and all the yeah. time, but you know. <laughs> It, it's nice to have that interpersonal exchange. So, Since we've been chatting only 15 minutes from here, but about an hour and 15 beforehand laughing, what? would you like to do a... I know, right? <laughs> it's midnight. You've been here since like five. Um, 
Would you like to do a comedy? Since oh, that's yes. obviously in your wheelhouse. Absolutely. I would, I mean, my dream would be to do a sitcom. Yeah. Absolutely. I would do it in a heartbeat. Hopefully that, that time comes. Maybe the producers of Blue Bloods will let you have like a dream episode or something or have Maybe. you hit your head or... Oh, yes. They could and come up with something. Like, I mean, they, they could. It's been 10 years. They need to change yeah. it up a little bit. Totally. Let's... Let's get a campaign totally. going. Maybe, maybe I just show up and I'm in the commissioner's chair because I have no idea what I'm doing. I have That's amnesia. <laughs> I think I am the commissioner. <laughs> so maybe, see, get a writer's credit. Or we just a- have a spinoff, you know, where I do become the commissioner and that it's a terrifying awesome parallel universe. <laughs> <laughs> People are going to be like, "That's irreverent." Yeah. <laughs> have Tom happened. just open the door, give you a look, and like, go back. <laughs> that would be amazing. He wouldn't have I to could, film. I could convince him. Even as much as he does now, he could. See. But he could still be number one on the call sheet just because well, I love because him Tom that Tom, much. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, my icon. <laughs> Any uh, funny antidote from a set that you that you can remember? That, oh, jeez. Like you, well, yeah. I've there's heard. there's so many, and most of them are way too inappropriate. Right, and, for, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> you know. We'll just <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Well, I, mean, I typically say that there there's a lot of potty humor that mm-hmm. goes on, um, but the timing of it is always pitch perfect, and yeah. the best is when it comes from Tom because he just drops these bombs and you don't know that right. they're going to happen like he can be totally deadpan and next thing you know we're all on the floor cause... yeah well because you guys are pretty much isolated unless you have a mm-hmm. guest star in and out like bb or mm-hmm. anyone you know something BB. like that yeah uh, and i miss otto asando too reverend potter mm-hmm. oh he's my fave yeah, those suits a... that those suits <laughs> every time the designers would dress him i'd come in and be like damn otto can say damn? i can say damn <laughs> right? you can say whatever yeah. you want Beavers. This is the internet. Right. You could do anything This you is want. true. Yeah. This is true. Nothing is off limits. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the world we live in, Abigail, the world we live in. It's 2019, everybody. That's right. If there's nothing to be thankful for, it's that. <laughs> oh, jeez. I know. Before this goes all sorts of sideways. I know, right? I just want to thank you so much for taking oh, the time to meet up with me. It was so much fun. Absolutely. And you literally Thanks are the funniest person I've ever interviewed in my yes! life. Yes! Yes! There aren't yes! awards for it, but hey, There's congrats. There's an award in my heart. In your heart, which is all that matters, it really. It really is all that matters, and me being verified on Twitter and Instagram, which I'm working Wh- on, because oh. you're not a person unless you're verified. Unless you're verified, yeah, exactly. Maybe one day you'll reach that status. I know. I'm getting there. I'm trying. You, you will. You'll, I have I'm faith trying. in you. <laughs> one well-captioned post at a time. That's <laughs> Hashtag checkmark. Hashtag. <laughs> Blue check. <laughs> Thank you so much, Abigail. <laughs>